share with you the one trick that used to make me a ton of tips back when I used to work as a barista. Then I'm gonna use that same concept and apply it to multiple different magic tricks, probably over 10 ideas of how you can use this gimmick anytime, anywhere, or at least if you have some coffee. Um, all I did is I went to Panera, my local coffee shop, and I asked them for some extra lids. These are the ones that they had at Panera. But originally where I used to work at, they actually had these coffee lids with this indentation, as you see there. If we compare them to the other one, you'll notice that it's just perfectly flat. Now grab a pair of scissors and then all you're going to do is take your cup and you can see here I've outlined it where you need to make your cuts. And then once you cut that out, you're just going to have the little piece that's going to go directly on top. So this is gonna be part of your gimmick. And then if you're doing it with this lid here, you're then going to have this little section. And as you can see, that kind of just lands directly on top. And the same thing goes for this one. It just goes directly on top. I'm gonna to start off showing you the my tip trick, the one that used to get me a lot of tips. After I would finish making their coffee back at the coffee shop, I would ask them for their name and I would write it down, let's say it was Karina. So I would write Karina and then we would um, close the Sharpie and then they would tell me that that wasn't their name. So, <laughs> cause of course it was Stephanie. So let's say I miscalled their name or I maybe misheard it. But the idea was that whenever I would just tap it with the Sharpie, it would now change into their name. And this is the very crude basic idea of how I used to perform this then I can't really do it with this cup, but I was able to load the gimmick underneath here. It's just, this cup is technically a little smaller, so I can't do the um, unload so that I would end completely clean. But really, after you take the Sharpie off, you can get rid of the gimmick. And I'm getting a little bit too ahead of myself, so it's very, very simple. You just start off with your gimmick, and I'm using the one that has the little flat side that comes down or the solo lid. The reason I'm doing that is because I'm going to very easily be able to steal that piece later. If I were to use the flat one, it's gonna be harder for me to do it with sleight of hand. So we're gonna to get to that a little later. For now, I'm just having this little piece with a fake name. And I used to have two, a girl and a boy's name. Then if I was performing for a girl, I would have the girl palmed almost like in a little lateral palm here like this, and then the Sharpie goes on top. So it just creates the illusion that you're just writing with the Sharpie. Now, because I have the cup here, I would take the lid off from there between the index and middle finger. And this is so that I can then easily load that piece on top. So we want to line it up so that these two edges are matched up. Then you write down their actual name, the name they tell you. In this case, it's gonna be Karina. And it's facing towards you, so they're not really seeing what you're writing. Now, at when you finish, you then bring the Sharpie over the cup, you drop the gimmick as you load the Sharpie into the cap. So, it kind of looks like you just write the name and then as you come over to cover the lid or the Sharpie, you are dropping that gimmick on top. Now, it is here when you show them and I have the coffee ready for Stephanie, you're gonna say, oh, that's not my name, I'm not Stephanie. Now, when I remove the Sharpie from my hand, that's when I'm going to steal the gimmick. You tell them, oh, this is not your coffee? So then I would come over, steal the, um, Sharpie with the pretext of just tapping, boom, and now it turns into Karina's coffee. After performing the sleight of hand version for a while, I decided to start introducing some magnets. So then what I would do is I would place a little magnet on the back of the gimmick, and then that would let me do a visual change. All I did is I put the magnet inside so that when this sticks to it, it hides behind the magnet, and you can see here it's a little bit above, so it's actually showing from the side. So in reality, we would want to bring it slightly down 
the magnet that's inside so that this hides a little bit easier and better right in the middle. So all you do is you tap, oh, you tap like that and it changes, but you can also reverse it if you just bring it on top and slide away, that can change. So you can make it change and you can also make it change this way. And all that's happening is this is taking it and then you can also just deposit it and because of this little piece here, that is going to go in and now you can slide that out and that will stay. The same thing happens with the napkin. If you just kind of take the napkin and give it a little cover like that, then you can have it change as well. You can do it either by bringing the napkin forward like this and just rubbing it. And now this has changed and all the attention is here. The napkin is not important work. We're just going to take this napkin, place it on top and you'll see that if we snap like this immediately, it changes and all we're doing is sticking it to the back of that napkin and it's super simple because all you need is either double-sided stick tape or in my case i'm using some adhesive dots i'm gonna leave the link in the description in case you want to pick these up but any adhesive dots any double-sided stick tape is going to work so now let's get into all the different tricks that we can do with this Oh, <laughs> and I ripped it with this little tiny gimmick. I don't have my wallet, but that can technically fit right inside of your wallet. So the first thing I came up with after doing the name thing was just having their coffee cup and covering it up like this. And then I would have the spectator just, you know, pick any card at all. Now I don't have anybody here. So what we're gonna do is just have you choose one and it'll just be a random one, let's say this one, so you just remember that. We lose it in the deck, and then the way we know which coffee is yours is because if you know what your card is, you immediately know which is your coffee, and you just have the card appear on their coffee cup. Super, super simple. Hopefully the king of clubs was the card they selected. But in order to do this, all you have to do is just, I'm using the little sticky, um, method here with the napkin and then you take your blank one you previously have a card that you write on their lid and then you just place this directly on top let's say this is your coffee cup and you're going to be performing this at starbucks or panera you can just write this down you have this in your wallet place it on top and now you're ready to go now you can force that king of clubs um, from whichever way you want you could do a um, criss cut force where you just have them cut anywhere they take a look at the car they cut to and it'll be the king of clubs now to make that change i just use this one here but feel free to use any change at all in fact you could even just come over show your hand empty and just start wiping away the little gimmick and now you can show that that has been gone and really i didn't do anything other than just pull that little piece out to cause that change. But anything at all, anything at all that you want to do, in fact, even if you just want to kind of wipe this around like this, throw it and maybe catch it in your other hand. I've never done that before, but <laughs> you can try it. I'm doing a little pause here just to remind you that at the end of this video, I'm going to be announcing the winners of last week's contest. Also, if you're enjoying this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and now, Let's get back to the trick. Yeah, but remember, we're just forcing a card. You could force anything at all that you want. Let's say superheroes using Digital Force Back, the app that you can force any item in a list of 100 items. So then you could very easily um, have, let's say the force item in this case, Thor. You have that already set on your cup. And then you have a white piece that's going to go on top. Now, if you have this one that has a hole, just make sure that goes directly so it matches. And another thing I wanna mention is that if you look at this, I've actually put white duct tape all across the back of it. That way is not see-through because if I don't put it there, you can actually see the writing on the back. So having a little white duct tape 
here makes it so that you can't see the reveal prematurely. So then you force your Thor, and when you're ready, you remove this either via a magnet or with the napkin, as we discussed, or any other way in which you want to remove this piece to reveal your Thor. Another similar yet different effect that you can do is on your gimmick, you can put little tiny dots, almost like to do a... Uh, using all these little pieces of line and then you're going to use those lines to morph them into the reveal, in this case, bat. But it could be anything, it could be a playing card, it could even be Thor, or it could be anything you want to reveal. The idea is that you're getting little tiny lines, almost like a snow globe, and when you shake it, it creates the effect of the word that you're trying to reveal. Check this out. So we have here the heart with a J, heart with a K. It's separated by, by a little gap, but all you have to do is just give it a little wave, and immediately those two, they link up, and now they're together. And I know that this isn't really a good performance. I just have the gimmick here, and I thumb-palmed a magnet in order to do this. You could actually maybe have it with some little sticky, and then it'll stay, that way it doesn't fall, or you could use a raven, or the napkin, or any other way in which you want to do the change. This is just to show you that you can take, for instance, a drawing or something that you have and cause it to change or do something visual on that cup. So here, all I'm doing is as my hand comes close, it steals it and you continue to rub. And that's pretty much it. So basically, this is just to show you that you can take one drawing and have it animate into another drawing. This one can technically go 20 million different ways, so I'm just gonna show you one. I'm gonna take the thing, it shouldn't have anything on it, but you make your prediction, and after you make your prediction, you actually don't show your spectators, so you keep it hidden, so they have no idea what's going on. And this could be done in front of them, or before you even start performing. The idea is that you then have them pick any card at all. So in this case, we'll go with the King of Clubs. So we'll just lose that card somewhere in there. And now all we have to do is try to find the card. And we'll do it like this. So, and this should be King of Diamonds. Now, I don't know if that was your card. In fact, it doesn't really matter because I actually wrote it on the back of there, and the, oh, that's the Three of Diamonds. So I'm guessing yours wasn't the King of Diamonds, but no worries, you just give it a little tiny tap like this, and instantly it changes, hopefully, into the King, which was your card, and that turns into the Three of Diamonds. So, this is one way in which you can perform this trick, but as you can see, it is just the idea of changing one card into another, and using the card to make the change. So all we have is this little gimmick, and I'm gonna show you how I'm putting it on, on the lid, because it's pretty cool the way this works. As you're writing it down, all you're doing is you're going to then bring your thumb over to let it ride and stay there. As you do that, you put the pen down, and now you can cover it with the lid. So you're doing everything in front of the spectator's eyes. Then to set up, I just have this card, which is technically a double card. I left this corner open so I could show you, and it just has a magnet so that when this goes on top of it like this, you can't see the gimmick on the other side. And I also want to mention that if you have this on the card, you can also have it change from king to three by just dragging it in front, okay? So you'll need your card, and then you'll need the king of clubs or the card you're going to force. Now you place your shimmed card on top of the deck, followed by your force card on top of the deck, and now you force that however you want. Here, I just kept a little break, as I dribble, I'm going to keep it big so you can see it, as I dribble the cards onto the table so that we could take that card. Then I place that card somewhere in the top portion so that I could continue to keep a hold of that shim card there, and I'm going to have that break 
on that card, everything goes inside, and then you just control it to the top. Now from here, I did a double to show a random card and not the shim card. So I named the king of diamonds, oh really was the king of diamonds not yours? You then flip the double over, put it down. They should still think this is the king of diamonds. It's not really that important because all the attention is gonna go here. We then grab that and we say, we can use the card to point, oh, that's not supposed to be, I thought that was gonna be your card, but you know what? I can just take the king of diamonds, tap it on top, and it'll change into the king of clubs. Um, I may have hurried it in the performance, but all you do now is as you transfer the card from one hand to the other, you're just going to palm that piece off as you show the uh, three of diamonds. I then use this hand because it has the dirty piece. I'm going to use the cup as a one by just grabbing it and showing it. Now this hand has an excuse for holding the cup and we have the palm piece and this is here and we are done. If you're familiar with the one ahead principle, so you can combine that one with this gimmick to create your prediction. And how that would work is, as you know, you're going to have to force something. And that you already have it pre-written anywhere you want to write on your gimmick. Now, because I'm using the notepad, this is what I have, but you could have business cards, playing cards, Anywhere in which you're going to have something written, you can do that. Now your spectators, they believe that you're writing this piece of information. In reality, you're writing the one ahead piece of information on your gimmick so that you can then steal it away and load it onto that cup. Again, because you've already have this pre-written here, your spectators are going to think that what you actually wrote on your notepad, business cards, or anything was this, and not that you had a secret gimmick that you were going to write on and then load onto your cup. So if you're not familiar with the one ahead principle, a simple Google search will explain it in detail. Another way in which you could use this gimmick is as a 50-50 out. So if for instance you have yes on the cup and no on your gimmick, you can now be 100% correct every single time. So this is gonna be useful for mentalists who like to maybe use a Himber wallet where they need one piece of information or another. This is going to allow you to do that a little bit more organically when the situation is right. If you come up with any routines or any tricks, presentations or anything, please leave them in the comments below. I would like to know how your mind works and what you come up with with this little gimmick. I wanna thank you so much for your time. And also before I go, if you see your name on the screen from now on, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start putting the names from the previous videos on the screen here, rather than me finding you on social media, messaging you and waiting for a reply, I'm now gonna put the burden on you. So if you see your name here, you have my email, email me letting me know that you won, and then I will send the gimmicks off to you. I want to thank you so much for your time. Once again, I'm Javier Fuenmayer, and I will see you next week on Monday.